recording. Good afternoon, everyone. And we are meeting today on a special Sunday session for part three of dental health. And so we're so grateful to have Sister Kibiel with us today to continue with um, the presentations and answering questions. And let us um, begin, Sister Camille. Whenever you're ready, could you please open us with a word of prayer? Yes. Loving Father in heaven, thank you so much for being with us. We understand that there may not be a lot of people here, but Lord, we thank you for the technology, for the recording. Lord, I pray that you would be with my mouth and let them hear only your voice and instructions, not just for them, but for myself as well. And so, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit to grace us with your presence, dear God. In Jesus' name, I do pray. Amen. Hello, everybody. Um, <clears throat> thank you for the short notice. One of the things that Natasha and I wanted to do is to make sure that we get this out to you and not stretch it out too far for people to, to get them this information. I think it would be very helpful um, for people to get this and share it as they um, apply the things that we're gonna be discussing to their ministry, to their role as taking up the medical missionary work. And so once the recording is done, it's, it's always there for people to use. So um, here you can see question and answers. And these are, there was only um, a few questions from yesterday. And um, just remember that the red asterisk means that I will go more in depth on that particular question during the presentation. Give me one second, I need to. Okay, thank you. So the first question was what causes cancer in the mouth and what are the symptoms? Um, I'm, all I'm gonna say at this point, we're gonna look at cancer more in depth later on as far as oral cancer is concerned, but we wanna remember that we want to, whenever uh, a question about some kind of illness to the body is concerned, we wanna look at the lifestyle and truly we want to look at the condition of the blood. What is going on with the blood? How is the lifestyle contributing to the blood that will cause illness to happen? Because remember, that the life of the flesh is in the blood. So um, that's, I'm gonna look at that. And then I'm gonna actually go a little bit more in depth with cancer from the oral, can from the oral, body, from the oral cavity. The other question was why, I don't know who asked this question, but the question was why my plaque accumulates more often than the rest of my family and friends. Well, the simple answer I would give is because your body's composition is not exactly the same as others. And so a person who may um, sweat a lot more, they're, they're, there's either a condition with their um, hormones. It could be, that could be a possible reason. But here we have with plaque accumulation, it's really because you're not the same as everybody else. That's the simple answer. You know, but um, when it comes to noticing that, then the best thing to do is to just ensure that you're keeping it off your teeth. And that's the best way I'm gonna answer that. Otherwise it's gonna take a long, long time. And then what causes itchy gums? As I read this question, this is actually a very vague question. My, my question to this would be for that person. Is that person on the line? The one who asked this question, are they on the line? I'm checking. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, she's not. Okay. So hopefully she would be able to hear my answer when she listens to this. This is a very vague question. There are certain times when the gums, my question would be, is there a certain time when the gums feels itchy or is it constantly happening? Does anything relieve that itchiness? Um, this is usually a um, potential symptom of periodontal disease or gum disease. That's what itchy gums that, that I'm familiar with. This person will have to, um, 
would need to have a periodontal examination with a dentist, with a periodontist to find out what's going on. And when I say this is usually a symptom of that's associated with periodontal disease, it means that there's something going on with the supporting structures of, of the body. And again, I'm going to go back to what's the lifestyle, what's going on with the blood, how clean is this person keeping their mouths? Is there some kind of hormonal imbalance? There's a lot of questions that can be asked just from that particular question. So that's the best way I'm, I can answer that at this time without going too much into it and not having any other assessed questions answered. Okay. Um, someone asked another question. This is not on the screen because I couldn't really remember. Um, they asked what to do what should they do? Should they just extract all their teeth or um, should they and get false teeth and things like that? Now that's a very deep question. And I and the, the basic answer that I gave is try to do your best to keep as much as your natural teeth as possible, all of them. Now there are reasons why people will extract their teeth. Their jawbone could not, may not be, um, at the proper size to accommodate all the teeth. And so sometimes you will see crowding in somebody's mouth where their teeth are like really close and they overlap each other. It could be because that's how their tooth actually um, grow in or they may have extra teeth. But in the case of um, seeing a need to remove teeth, there, there, there has to be some kind of, is there concern that there's some kind of disease process that's going on with the oral cavity, with the teeth themselves, to actually remove them. Again, I'm going to stress, look at the blood, look at the lifestyle, especially the blood, okay? Um, and so what I did in response to that particular question is um, there are many options when someone loses a tooth or loses several teeth, and it depends on where the loss is and knowing what the options are. Now, I am not a big um, promoter for just pulling your teeth because it's hard for you to deal with it. If there's something going on with the body and the pockets are constantly there, then it needs constant attention more than the average person would. But um, there are options and that would be something that the dentist would have to explain and discuss with the patients themselves. This is another vague question, so I'm not going to go too much into all the options, but this is, I'm gonna show you a picture as to one possible option, if you lose, if you have to lose some teeth, okay, this is what's called a partial denture, okay, because they have their their natural existing teeth, but here this partial denture, which has metal on it, but that's that's okay. This metal is okay. Um, they would actually modify. If you see, if you can look at um the actual denture itself, it has a little silver, um extension on the actual tooth themselves and they will actually those those will go into the grooves of the teeth that they're going to sit right next to so that they don't move you see it on the back ones as well and so they would it would just actually snap down and they would eat perfectly fine and they just have to keep this clean that's an option another option would be um a full mouth denture and if you notice, there's a lot of anatomy on this gum. You have the palate, you have the attached gingiva that goes all the way up to that V line in between the front teeth on the pink area, the gums, you see that V line. That is covering everything because this person has lost their alveolar bone. And so now the face sinks in. Remember, the bone is there to um, maintain the actual structure of their face. And so that's what another type of... Um, denture that they will be looking at if they have to have their teeth removed, but they want to have the, the use of teeth and the aesthetics of their face. Hopefully that will answer, that answered the question for that individual. Um, another thing that is very important for dentures is that it would be good to have um, a picture of yourself when you actually have teeth because the the lab techs that are going to be fabricating this prosthetic or making these these dentures would be um it would be very helpful to them to see how the face 
was shaped and formed and everything so that they can actually create that um that prosthetic, that denture for them. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. Is there any other questions at this time? There was one more, I'm sorry. Um, what causes mouth ulcers? That depends on the type of ulcers that are in the mouth. Is it cancerous? Is it not cancerous? Have they um at um have they been having this recurrently? There's a lot of mouth ulcers. So I would have to I would have to ask more questions to that person and everything. But once again, you want to look at the blood. Okay. So hopefully that person will be able to extend and extend the, the questions more, or they can just contact me and Natasha will be fine. Okay, so this is where we left off yesterday because of time and respecting the time. So how many of you remember what this picture is about? Anybody? Well, your mouth um, extracting your own tooth. That's right. Is that is that okay? That's that's absolutely correct. Your mouth, your your body is actually extracting your own teeth. Give me one second. My I need to take care of one little thing. Thank you. So yeah, this is your mouth actually extracting your teeth. If you can remember this particular picture, let me see. Yes, this particular picture, we're looking at um, what is called the sulcus. You probably can't see my arrow here, but between the pink gums and the tooth with something that looks like mud is splattered all over it. That's the calcified bacteria, also known as calculus, or most commonly tartar. Okay, this is resting up the gums, it's resting up against the tooth and it actually causes irritation to the gums and that causes ulcerations on the side of the gums that lay up against the tooth. And when we brush our floss, you may have bleeding gums and that um, gives an open entrance to, um, an open entrance to the, to the bloodstream. And that is pretty much what causes periodontal disease to progress in the mouth. This is what pretty much co contributes to other um, to other conditions in the mouth. So here I'm going to actually address that one question where somebody asked, um, what was the question? Does bentonite clay help to restore the pocket? Now here you can actually, I'm gonna take this picture off the screen. You can see the pockets in between the teeth where the pink gums lies up against the tooth. That is an actual, from the top of that pink gum all the way to the bottom where you see the pink actually touches the tooth, that is a pocket. That is what, what we call a period, what is called a periodontal pocket. Oh, I have a question here. Give me one second. Okay, so this question is about um, a missing tooth and not being comfortable with a bridge and um, or a denture. And it's also about um, what safe implants will you recommend? Well, for this individual, I would encourage you to stay with this presentation because I actually addressed those and I have the pictures for those. I only brought up that picture of the denture um, because the individual asks about removing all their teeth. And I want them to be very, very aware of the fact that you're gonna change your whole structure if you willingly choose your teeth and you don't really have to. So just know what your options are. As far as implants, crowns, bridges, and all those things, I'm just gonna show you some more pictures on those later on as I get to that as to how to deal with um, losing teeth. So just hang with us and you'll get that answer, okay? So here we see um, what is called the periodontal pockets. If it's left untreated, then tooth loss is obviously going to be inevitable. This will then contribute and lead to um, the proliferation of systemic diseases because there's constant access of the bacteria to the bloodstream. So when you understand that there's a pocket between the tooth and the gums, and you see that the bone is being lost, you can understand that 
using bentonite clay is not going to restore the pockets. What needs to be done actually is for this, all of this buildup on the teeth needs to be removed. Okay, that needs to be removed and the and cleanliness would need to be consistently maintained. So this person now is gonna be working alongside with that dental professional, with the hygienist, with the, periodon with the periodontist to make sure that the pocket is not going to be reestablished. What happened is once this um this is cleaned off the, the tooth, think of it like a um like you have your shoes on and you're walking on the beach or you're walking somewhere where you have a lot of little sand pebbles or rocks in your shoe. You yourself is going to actually reach down and remove the shoe so that you can get rid of that irritant. Here the body is doing it for you. Okay. And so so that you can actually put your shoe back on and walk comfortably. Unfortunately, when the tooth is lost, it's gone. It's not going to go back. So the best thing is to actually get this buildup of tartar and plaque removed and then maintained with constant cleanliness. Okay, and um, to help maintain that secondary attachment that will naturally occur. So at this point, what I would like to do is let me go over some important steps found in the council found in the council of God to us in the book of ministry ministry of healing. And this is and this remember that when it comes to disease, there are actually four steps that we want to keep in mind. Remembering that disease is an effort of nature to free the system of conditions that are a result of the laws of health. And we know what the laws of health are. Before I click the screen and go into these to these steps, what are the laws of health? Can you type that in the chat? Caleb, get me some. Okay. Anybody, what are the laws of health? Can you name at least one? Air, water, nutrition. Okay, so we have pure air. Mm -hmm. Sunshine, rest. Yes, pure air, sunshine, temperance, rest, exercise, the use of water, trusting God. Good job. I see those things. That's exactly what I was looking for. Um, trust in divine power, cleanliness, and purity of mind. Yes, those are the two that really all of them apply, but cleanliness is going to be a big deal for um dental health which will eventually essentially um, affect systemic overall health. Okay, so let's just um, move on here. There's something, okay. Okay, so how to approach disease. Here in the Ministry of Healing, Page 127. Where is this? I cannot find. You want to first find the cause, find out what the cause is. In that previous picture, you know it's plaque. It's a buildup on the teeth. And that's what's causing your body to say, I need to extract this tooth. Second, you want to change unhealthful conditions. You actually want to get your teeth cleaned. And third, you want to correct wrong habits. In this case, it would be don't neglect brushing and flossing. And then fourth, assist nature or assist the body to get rid of impurities so that health can be reestablished. Okay, so you're going to assist your body by going to get the help that you need. Okay, in this case, I'm not going to tell you to use some herbs, but I'm definitely going to adjust the laws of health. Now, when we look at what the laws of health are, we have to remember that the life of the flesh is in the blood. This is scripture. Remember, when I started this, I said we're going to be using the Bible, the spirit of prophecy, and good science. Um, she said in councils of di councils and diets of and food. She said that in order to have good health, we must have good blood for the blood is the current of life. It repairs waste and nourishes the body, 
when supplied with the proper food elements and when cleansed with vit and vitalized by contact with pure air, it carries life and vigor to every part of the system. Okay, so this is just the basics of the laws of health. And so pure air en uh, enables us to have good blood. If the body is constantly trying to fight to kill this stuff off, it means that the blood is saying, look, there's too much going on. We have to start extracting and breaking down the bone. And the body literally makes that decision for that person who is not aware that something is wrong or that their teeth is not being cleaned as it should be. Next would be sunlight. Sunshine provides vitamin D. This hormone plays a major role in the strength of the bone that surrounds and supports the teeth. So we absolutely need vitamin D. And for, for, for people who are even more concerned about bone health, it would be good to have K2. Is there a question? No, please go ahead. They just weren't muted. Okay. Um, Next, we have um, temperance. How much sugar is a person taking in and what type is it? The reason why I'm focusing on sugar is because sugar is the main culprit for the bacteria that is in the mouth, for the proliferation of a lot of the bacteria in the mouth. Okay, so intemperate eating is often the cause of sickness. And what nature most need, needs is to be re relieved of the undue burden that has been placed upon her, nature meaning our body. In many cases of sickness, the very best remedy for the patient is to fast for a meal or two that the overworked organs of digestion may have an opportunity to rest. Digestion starts in the mouth. Okay, and so your body now has to deal with all the sugar that is going in. So as you're eating, if you're not drinking enough water, which we're going to talk about later, um, you're not going to have enough saliva to produce so that you can it can actually help keep the mouth in an alkaline state so that the bacteria does not proliferate because it really likes an acidic environment. And that's what it's going to contribute to making the, the oral cavity more acidic. Rest. If you do not give your mouth a rest from eating, your stomach will never get any rest. The stomach is saying, give me rest. But with many of the faintness and but with many, the faintness is interpreted as a demand for more food. So instead of giving the stomach rest, another burden is placed upon it. As, the cons as a consequence, the digestive organs are often left worn out when they should be capable of doing good work. Now, the reason why I brought this up is chewing gum and the tongue. This actually keeps the, st the stomach in constant action. Yes, it may um, produce saliva and everything, but if part of the body is sick, another part is going to get sick, especially the stomach that actually is responsible for a lot of the chemical exchange or chemical reaction exchange of food into nutrients that the body can use. And if that it gets into the small intestine, it's not going to, uh, it's going to absorb things that is not good for it, or there's going to be fermentation in the stomach, which is not good for the body, neither is it good for the blood. And if you look at this particular picture here, you see that the um, the alveola at the very bottom of the screen, where it says alveolar vessels and nerves, you have um, blood vessels that is supplied to each too. So you really, and, and, and there's also blood vessels that supports and supplies the alveolar bone. And so if you don't have good blood going to these areas, the body will start breaking down the bone. It will naturally happen. Exercise. Chewing is the exercise for the periodontal ligaments. You can see it on the screen there. And water gets rid of the excess sugar to help restore the proper pH of the mouth. Okay? And I'm not going to... As a matter of fact, I would say that rinsing with water is better than having a piece of candy in a person's mouth. A lot of people seem to think that, oh, let me chew on a, um, let me suck on a piece of mint or something like that. And that does more damage to them than they think. It's better to just rinse your mouth with water if you can't brush right away to keep the mouth clean. Nutrition, we're gonna, you have to really pay attention to the amount of sugar used. And please understand that fruits have sugar. 
You know, when you eat a sweet food, there is there are sugars in, in those foods. So you have to even pay attention to those things. Um, so you want to limit the amount of sugar you are using. Vitamin C is very, very important for the teeth and the gums. The vitamin C actually keeps the connective tissue in your gums healthy and strong. And the peroneal ligament is a type of connective tissue. I mean, yes, connective tissue. Okay, this means that deficiencies in vitamin C can lead to bleeding gums and gum disease. Um, some of the sources of vitamin C are your citrus fruits, your peppers, your sweet potatoes, broccoli, berries, kale. As mentioned before, high, I mean, as mentioned, yes, high doses of this is, um, is also effective in, I'm going to hold on that thought for a second. I mentioned vitamin D2. D with K2, vitamin D3 with K, with K2, that plays a crucial um, role in bone and tooth remineralization. This is very good for the strength of the bones. Deficiency can lead to several oral health disorders such as gum inflammation, cavities, and gum disease overall. Okay, a good source um, for vitamin D is of course your sunshine or you take the supplements. You have sources for calcium is also very important for the bone. And um, your good sources for those is like broccoli, collard, kale, Chinese cabbage, Brazil nuts, sunflower seeds. Um, sesame seed is also good, which you can find in like tahini. And then vitamin A also, um, the saliva, helps the saliva to break down food and also clean bacteria from or between the teeth, that's the saliva. So you need vitamin A for that. And those are your, your sources would be like your orange colored fruits and vegetables like carrots and sweet potatoes and those type of things. You also wanna look at uh, making sure that you have items like garlic, turmeric, and these are both anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. And you can use turmeric and teas in your food. And of course, garlic, you cook with it and all those things. Never, ever eat garlic raw. Clove oil for pain. It has long been used for, for toothache. Usually when I was working in the dental clinic, um, when you walk into a dental clinic, it smells like a, a, a solution called eugenol. It's really clove. And that's what we use for people with toothaches when they come in. You know, so um, you really want to pay attention to, to these type of items. And just keep doing your research to make sure that you're taking in things in your body that will help. Now, a lot of people are concerned about um, fluoride. There are things that naturally have fluoride. You have the, the green grapes. Just make sure your grapes have seeds. And even the birch bark um, also has fluoride in it. So just you can make your tea from, from birch bark. And you can also eat healthy grapes. There are other things that has fluoride as well. And then, of course, trust in um, in divine power and purity of mind. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians 2, 5. But the one that I, the one that I, I of course, we like all the texts in the Bible when we become familiar with that. And the thing is, if it's one thing that God wants to do is to heal us and restore us in his image. Okay, he came to save us and heal us, but this is an ongoing situation. And it just it just shows the patience of God with all of us because he knows that some of us do not know these things. And so because of this, the moment you decide to connect with him and be wholly his, peace will come to our mind as we continue to allow ourselves to learn and put into practice what we have learned. So um, even if a person has lost a tooth or two or all of their teeth, you know, um, we don't really need to worry because he has the best solution for us. Unfortunately, those things happen, but we want to make sure that we just remember to just go to him with all of our situation and he will provide the, the solution for us, even if he doesn't answer in the way that we are expecting. And so whatsoever things are honest, just, pure, lovely, and of a good report, think of these things. As I was meditating on this text, I realize that if I'm thinking anything outside of these things, I do not have permission from God to think those things. So I have to redirect my, th my thoughts, okay? Because this is the instruction, think on these things. Anything else, God did not give us permission to think 
and meditate upon those things. Just a word of encouragement for all of us. Cleanliness. Now, we have heard the statement that cleanliness is next to godliness. Now, this statement is not found in the Bible anywhere, but the principle can be clearly understood. As a matter of fact, this statement was actually made by John Wesley in 1791 to um, in, in a a sermon that he gave. It says, Leviticus chapter 10, 10 says, and that ye may put difference between holy and unholy, between unclean and clean. It is very important to God that we keep ourselves clean. Anywhere, now please don't take this the wrong way. Anywhere that, that is dirty, or where filth is condoned is not a place where health is encouraged. And this, I would dare to say that God is not pleased with an unclean person who knows that they are unclean. Unclean. Now, um, let me qualify this statement. I do understand that there are times when something happens or happens or there is an emergent situation for people to take care of or that I may need to take care of. But we have to always remember that we need to go back and clean up. If we have to run out of somewhere because there's an emergency, then just remember, if you didn't clean your teeth, just remember to take a moment when you do have that time to clean your mouth and anything else that needs to be done. Okay? Because this is indeed one of the laws of health and a violation of any of the laws would be a contributing factor to illness. Are there any questions so far? No? Okay, so we're gonna move on. This is where we get to dive in. Okay, so um, here we left off yesterday to show how dental diseases um, connects with systemic diseases and systemic conditions, okay? Halitosis is one of them. It's another name for another word for bad breath. And this is due to a lack of regular brushing and flossing and that, that causes food particles that are left behind to be wedged between the teeth usually because people usually brush their teeth. Some people don't, but either way, some part of the tooth is left unclean. These food particles collect bacteria and they emit chemicals like um, hydrogen sulfide, which is the same compound that gives rotten eggs their characteristic smell. Okay, those are from their exotoxin. It is also caused by not brushing the tongue. Now, this is where I'm going to start to um, answer the question about um, a tongue scraper. Okay, um, the tongue actually has unfortunately I didn't even put a picture in here but it has like this velvet look on it and you can brush your tongue forward and you can raise those um that those structures up because bacteria will actually be stored onto them so brushing the tongue is absolutely a very good thing you know with your toothpaste or with just water it's important to brush the tongue you don't necessarily have to get a tongue scraper you can just use your toothbrush to, to clean the tongue off. Another cause of bad breath can come from poor gut health. And you can, you know, believe it or not, when I was fully, fully practicing on the Air Force Base or when I started getting really into, into dental hygiene and practicing this profession, I could actually tell what was going on with somebody internally by smelling their breath. I became that um, keen to actual smells. So another cause can come from poor gut health. They have a totally completely different smell from um, just not brushing your teeth. And then again, there are periodontal disease or even rotting of the gums that can cause bad breath from a disease actually called um, NUG or NUP, which is ulcerative, I mean, necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis or necrotizing ulcerative periodont periodontitis. This is where the gum is actually rotting in the mouth. And you can smell that like 10 feet away. Okay, it's, it's actually um, not a very good condition to have. And usually people who are afraid of getting their teeth clean, those are the ones that I, that I saw that 
that will have this condition that I saw. Okay, apart from poor oral health, it is vital that the health of the blood be examined when dealing with dental and systemic disease. So I'm gonna pause here to say this, say this very important thing that deals with dental and medical health professionals. Now, as you already know, I am a dental hygienist and I'm also a registered nurse. And working in both on both sides, okay, right there and on the front line, working on both sides, it is absolutely vital and important that um, the oral health um, should be, the importance of oral health should be given by a dentist as well as a doctor from a physician, okay? And this should be done from a, from a preventive measure for all systemic diseases and not just the ones listed on this screen, okay? This would, be, this would obviously be in the best interest of the patient's overall health. You cannot ignore dental health when it comes to systemic disease. Patients should also be advised to have regular visits for oral health screening, just as they're encouraged to go see their doctor regularly. Now, um, this may be once or twice a year for this, these dental visits. Now, I know that a lot of people may question in this day and time, may question the integrity of the medical field but this decision is left up to the individual, but I will highly encourage them to make sure that they get at least a checkup on and know what's going on with their mouths, with the health of their mouth, because it may very well be contributing, the major contributing factor to any systemic conditions that they may have. I'll tell you a story later on as I go into diabetes, as I'm working as a nurse on the floor. The issue is that most people, and I know this, cannot afford dental care in a lot of countries. And I understand this as well. So um, just keep that in mind, try and get these things done. In the United States, I know for the state that I am licensed in, I know where all the, um, the public health facilities are that actually provide free dental health care to people. So it's just important for you to look up for your state where these things are. You wanna start with the public health department because they usually have a dentist there. Okay, just a little. FYI for you. So let me move on to um, heart disease. But before I do that, I want us to take a good look at this picture again. On the previous one, I did not put Oral Health Magazine. This is where I got this actual picture from. So if you're print screening it, please give credit where it is due. It's the most amazing picture I've ever seen as a dental hygienist and I fell in love. So I had to use it. Um, just remember, you have the bacteria, the calcified bacteria that serves as a foundation for other bacteria to come up and build itself up called biofilm. You have the open wounds. You have the open wounds on the gums that lay up against the tooth, and then you have the bone. You want to watch those things, but you must keep your eye on the flow of the blood. Okay, let me pause here for another thing. Yes, I um I see two comments here. Your local dental school is awesome. That is absolutely on point. As well as your hygiene school usually offer discount cleanings. Yes, because we had to practice. I, I had to practice on somebody in order to pass my boards. And um, it, those are those are very good way. And the thing about the hygiene school, when you go to get an examination, you actually get your, your exam from a dentist and you probably would get a full mouth x-rays if you're not objective, objecting x-rays, um, which is something that's very needed for proper oral examination. You absolutely need those, you know? Um, so if that's a concern, you can always detox your body or use certain herbs or certain things to actually clean up all those free radicals that may occur. But keep in mind, it's a very minuscule amount of x-ray radiation that takes place. I mean, you can go into that if you want to, but just, just keep in mind that there, there are things to deal with that. Um, but the hygiene school, you get a full um, set of x-rays, a panoramic x-ray. You actually get um, intraoral photos and a cleaning. And please understand when those professors and instructors are there, the patient is not gonna leave with anything on their teeth. I promise you that. You know, we had to pass our boards in order to practice. So just keep in mind that these um, these facilities are also very good. And we are 
when I was a student, we are constantly looking for patients, constantly looking for, for patients. Yes, yes, that is true, um, Veronica. The dental schools, they will take care of you. So just find out where they are in your area. Okay, so thank you, ladies, for, for bringing that up. Very good information. <clears throat> it is vital that you remember this picture, okay, and, and know what it is telling us. All right. This person or this picture of this tooth is just pretty much at a gingivitis level. The gums are irritated. There's no bone loss, but there's something that needs to be removed. If this is left there, other things can happen because now there's an open access to the bloodstream. OK, it tells how bacteria and pathogens enters the blood. Once you understand this, it will be much easier to understand the other things that happens for us to have an idea how to approach illness from an oral health perspective. And as a medical missionary, we cannot overlook the mouth. And I'm gonna tell you all the medical missionary training that I've been through, I have never heard of um, dental health being presented. I mean, I did one for another platform, but that was just recently. And I think it's vital that we have this a part of the, the ministries that are out there. Okay, <laughs> take a look at what um, Veronica is sharing with us. I mean, she's just helping me along here. Thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at heart disease. This is another picture that I absolutely love. I don't remember where I got it from. I think it's from the Oral Health Magazine. And I have adapted it for my WhatsApp picture because I'm in love when I see these things. When I see the heart and the body and the teeth, you have all my attention, okay? So when you look at this picture, you can see that the heart should be considered when it comes to heart and dental health. When a person thinks about the heart, he or she may automatically think of the blood being pumped through the body naturally or, um, or its circulation or its quality or its quantity, whichever one. They may even think about blood vessels, arteries, blockage, if they're aware of those type of anatomy. but Seldom do they think about the teeth and the heart, okay? But when you think about when you think about this, you want to take a very close look at what can happen when this bacteria enters the bloodstream. Okay? Here you have um, arteriosclerosis. This has to do with the heart pumping blood in um, a disease in disease blood vessels, okay? Arteriosclerosis is a high level of disease causing bacteria in the mouth can lead to clogging of the carotid artery and increase the stroke's risk. It refers to the buildup of fat, cholesterol, and other substances in or on your artery wall. This is plaque buildup on the artery wall, which can restrict blood flow. The plaque can build up so much that it can cause clogging in the blood vessels. Now, although arteriosclerosis is often considered um, a heart problem, it can affect arteries anywhere in the body, anywhere, any kind of blood vessels or arteries anywhere in the, in the body. So when it comes to arteriosclerosis and poor dental health, high levels of disease bacteria in the mouth can lead to to clogging of the carotid artery, which can increase the risk of stroke. It's actually an insidious process, if you really think about it. So you have this bacteria coming into the blood, it clogs the artery, and now the person has a stroke. And most of the time, they're, gonna, they're not gonna look for that. When you go to the hospital, that's not the first thing that they look for when they have a stroke. They're gonna look at how much oils are you taking? What are your cholesterol level? What are your triglycerides? And dental, dental health or oral health is not even, it's very rarely considered but it does happen. It can cause other problems in the body as well, but we'll touch on that later on. Arteriosclerosis is the underlying pathology of cardiac disease. Evidence suggests that arteriosclerosis arises from the combination of, an, of a dysfunction and inflammation of the lining of the blood vessels. And what causes, causes this inflammation? Periodontal pathogens, okay? or their toxins. They gain access to the blood circulation from where? From the sulcus or the pocket. 
the peritoneal pocket, which directly invades the arterial wall and subsequently lead to the inflammation, which leads to arteriosclerosis and directly affects that directly affects the blood lining. So as this buildup of, of periodontal pathogens continues to happen, guess what? It's going to calcify the blood vessels. It's going to cut off the cut off circulation. And that can be very, very bad. Now, when we talk about, and I'm moving a little bit here, when we talk about um, this buildup and clotting off or actually clogging off the, the, the blood flow from within the blood vessel, it actually causes other problems, which is my next systemic condition. And that would be erectile dysfunction. Well, Can I pause you for a quick question? Sure. Could you go back one? So when someone, let's say someone has this, how would they know? Are there blood tests that would show, hey, we see oral pathogens in the bloodstream? Like who is checking for this? They would have, the doctor who is aware of dental health, of oral health, they would have to look for those bacteria in the blood. So what would happen is you have what they call now, what do they call the doctors that are called um, functional doctors? That's the name for them now. Okay. They're called function. They actually try to ascertain the cause so they're going to do more tests um to find out what is the possible cause for example when somebody has um i didn't talk about this in here but when somebody has like a um a knee implant like or hips that individual doctor will be working with their that person's dentist to make sure that if those implants fail or there's something going on to look for oral pathogens in the blood because that is one of the main causes of these things to become inflamed thank you so they do know in some specialty areas to look for this connection but your general run-of-the-mill um primary care physician is not doing this level of investigation. Would that be correct? Some of them know. Some of them know. And, I, and I'm going to pause and actually answer it from this perspective. When I was working on the floor, I used to work on a post-surgical floor. I worked on a, um, a step-down critical care floor, and I would be floated to a step-down critical care floor in the hospital. And my last place that I worked was a post-surgical floor. And what happened was <laughs> I'm looking at the medication that I'm giving the, 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 the patient, this patient, you hear a little bit more when I get to that particular disease. And the thing was, um, I started thinking because I come in as a nurse, but I have this whole dental background. So I'm, I can look at things a little bit different from other people, other nurses, because they don't have that dental background. So I went to my, 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 my manager, and I said, how is it that we don't have a dentist in the, in the hospitals? Why don't we have dentists in the hospitals? You know, because it would be very important to, to have them here just because of what I'm looking at and the medications that I'm giving and what's going on in this person's blood. And, you know, she never said anything to me. She just looked at me like knowingly, like, you know, what you made, what you said just makes sense, but I'm not going to open that can of worm in discussing that. And that was the impression that I got. You know, all caring manager, admired her to the fullest, nothing negative to say about her. And I think she understood what I was asking her. And so I just smiled at her and just walked away. I said, I see what's going on. And so my mission, you know, somebody here on this platform, I love their slogan, duty bound, you know, Galatians something. And I'm like, yeah, we have to be duty bound. We have to be purposeful in our profession and using it for the glory of God and get people to understand. So I became a nurse so that I can tell patients, hey, you might want to consider looking this up. And that's how I usually get the information to them because you cannot override what the doctor says. 
I hope that answers your question. There's a lot of miseducation out there or lack thereof. And this is why I think there should be a dental medical collaboration in the schools. I don't think they should be separate because you're talking about the same body. But those are my insight thoughts. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So um, so when you have this clogging up of the artery, this is I, I I had this further down in the presentation, but because of the 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 effects on the actual blood vessels, I brought it up here to show how arteriosclerosis that is caused from periodontal pathogens can actually contribute to erectile dysfunction for males. And that can be a serious problem in a marital relationship. Okay, periodontal, um, periodontal microbes gain access to the bloodstream. By this point, we should all know what that is. Okay, here's a, here's a good picture of, of, of it. You see how from the heart, from the mouth, the pathogen comes in and it goes right into the bloodstream and blocks it off. Okay, just remember, as medical missionary and people who are doing this work to get the gospel out to people, we know that the, the health message is the right arm of the gospel. We don't want anybody being lost. And so what we do, we need to reach them through this message, through the health message, help them to understand and show them the reality of what it is. You don't even have to... Um, don't take this the wrong way. You don't even have to open the Bible or any of the spirit of prophecy or anybody else's um, book or reference. You can just use the signs and then work them back and show, hey, look, did you know that this stuff is already told to us? The life of the flesh is in the blood. How do you take care of it? What's going on? Let me go back to this. So um, erectile dysfunction can occur when periodontal bacteria travels through the bloodstream, inflaming the blood vessels and causing blockage of the blood flow to the genital. In fact, men with periodontal disease are seven, three to seven times more likely to experience erectile dysfunction than men with good oral health. That's from the Journal of um, Human Reproductive Science, okay? And so you have inflammation, you have endothelial, which is the lining of the blood vessels that supplies blood to the male organ, dysfunction, there's a dysfunction there. And exposure increases the calcification. And there are seven, like I just said, read, three to seven times more likely to have this condition because of their mouth. And there are a lot of people out there who are not fully aware of how dental health contributes to their body and how their body functions or they may not think that it connects but it does it's in your, it's a part of your body okay so um so let me just look at this one more time according to some research okay people with periodontal disease are two times more likely to develop heart disease Heart disease that has to do with the blood vessels, okay? And narrowing of the blood vessels are as a result of the periodontal bacteria and plaque entering the bloodstream through those periodontal pockets. In fact, one study found that the presence of gum disease cavities and missing teeth are as good as predicting heart disease as cholesterol levels. So if you look at somebody's mouth, so the dentist then should say, look, you really, I see you have severe periodontal disease, I am going to encourage you to go and visit your doctor and get an examination of your blood and really work on lifestyle changes. This is how we should be talking as healthcare, as dental healthcare professionals, how we should be talking to the, to our patients. Not most, many people don't, but most do. Some do. Let me just clap, make that clear. As we've already talked about the calcification, the calcification of the arteries, we can now understand how heart disease, such as heart attacks, myocardial infarctions, and so on can occur. Okay. In addition, when there are appliances such as heart valves, pacemakers, stents, 
um, implants of the knee and the hips, these tend to actually attract bacteria, which creates a situation that is a nightmare to remedy and completely solve. Because now you're going to have to go in and find out and clean all these things off. Okay. Another systemic disease that, we'll, that we're going to look at is diabetes mellitus. Now, this is mainly, I'm focusing mainly on diabetes type 2, okay? Now, when it comes to diabetes and periodontal disease, I call the, this like a tag team um, type of disease game going on. It's not a game. I'm not making light of it, but it's like they tag team each other, okay? Now, how many of you actually recall this picture? I hope you do. Um. Um, I really hope you will remember. I want this picture to be like plastered in your mind. I'm not telling you to go dream about it, but I really want you to understand and see what is going on. Okay. So um, <clears throat> remember when a person eats, their, their food has what? Sugars. The number one food source for the bacteria or these periodontal pathogens or any bacteria really is sugar. So the food that they eat, will feed, they will feed off the sugar within the blood or in a person who has poor glycemic control. I mean, those bacteria are having a buffet all day long and forget it if they eat right before they go to bed. This will then allow the bacteria to proliferate and multiply within the blood. This is not good. So the more the person consumes sugar, the more out of control both diseases will get. The diabetes will be out of control. The um, gum disease is going to be out of control. One situation that is really bad is when a person ends up getting um, a gangrene infection. And I remember this. This is a patient that I had. The uncontrolled blood sugar will make that situation harder to control. Now, as a nurse, I, I actually recall having a patient. I remember going in, you know, you get like five or six patients on the floor. And they're, they remember, it's a post-surgical um, floor that I'm working on. So I have to monitor and meet and keep them in a good, stable state. And so I remember um, taking care of this patient and I walked in and, and, you know, you read the case that you're dealing with. This person just had what they call um, a metatarsal amputation. And this is pretty much they pretty much amputated her foot from her ankle down. OK, um, <clears throat> as I was looking over, as I'm like administering the medication and looking over the before I even administer them, I look over the medication as to when I need to give these things. And like maybe two, three times a day, this lady was getting getting some heavy duty medication. When you talk about like metronidazole and, and Zosin and, and you're like, what in the world is this lady, her liver is going through? You know, when you start thinking on that level, you're like, what, why, you know? So um, it was, she was taking like Zosin and um, vancomycin and these kind of medications. And these are strong antibiotics, you know? And so um, after my assessment, I actually realized that while these medications were being administered to this patient, it will never totally treat the root problem. Remember, the cure is in the cause, okay? Because as I did my assessment, coming in as a dental hygienist into the medical field, I'm going to look at my patient's mouth. That's what I do. And so when I looked at her mouth, this patient had severe periodontal disease. The teeth of this patient, okay, actually looked like this. Literally. And I thought to myself, oh my. So as I'm given these um, medications, I know that the more I give this patient this medication, it is not going to help her because the cause was in her mouth and it's never going to be addressed in the hospital. There is no way. They don't do that in the hospital. They don't do dental care in the hospital. 
Now remember that periodontal disease and 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 um, diabetes are like two way. They have a relationship with each with in, with each other. And so I advised this patient. I said, you need to go and get proper dental care. You know, she would look at me, and of course, she's looking at my teeth, and she's just like, you have beautiful teeth. I said, thank you, but I'm going to tell you how you can get this taken up. I said, this is the cause for your gangrenous condition and why you lost your feet. Okay, this was actually the cause. And if you don't want to lose any other part of your body, I highly encourage you to go and get your teeth cleaned properly. And of course, she's going to tell me I don't have any insurance and anything like that. And I can't pay for dental health. I said, you know what? This is where you need to go. And that's where I mentioned those um, available facilities. Go and get yourself taken care of. And believe it or not, as you are, as you go through like a dental hygiene school, the way they actually work is that they keep you as a patient because they want you to come back. You know, and so you get the put on maintenance. Some patients would have to get like their teeth every three months. Every four or five or six months, they would have to continually keep coming back. So they will continually get the, the care that they need at a very, very low, low cost. So um, I'm not going to go into the, the financial part because I think a lot of you understand. That was a part of my initial um, presentation, but for I don't think I need to do that here. But this is what the x-ray would look like on a person with a condition like this, okay? If you see where the uh, that orange arrow is on the picture of uh, the x-ray pictures on the lower screen, on the lower part of the screen, this tooth is actually being physically extracted. It's a tooth with a root canal and it's being physically extracted. If you look at the, 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 the first picture on the upper left-hand side, you can see the amount of bone loss that's going on there. So the x-rays are important. They do serve a purpose. And so what happened is <clears throat> you would have chronic gum disease, okay? And that affects um, the glycemic control. It would be very poor. And because of that, they won't have, um, because they don't know, because they don't know how the bacteria in the mouth affects the amount of sugar in their body and they don't understand that the foods that they're eating is high in sugar and if they're constantly eating they're still putting in carbohydrates and the sugars in their body and so they keep causing that to happen so the bacteria in the mouth is going to keep feeding off that sugar and it just keeps going on in a really vicious cycle <laughs> sorry about that guys and ladies and so it just keeps going on and on and on so the best thing to do is actually get a full thorough cleaning Okay, a full star cleaning because most people don't know this. And so when we're as medical missionaries, when we're treating people with diabetes and we're not talking about their oral health, we are doing them a serious injustice. I'm just looking at something here. And so we're doing them a serious injustice if we are not educating the people that we are caring for. Because remember, we want to win a soul for heaven. Okay? I'm not gonna go over this. This was um, this was when I was in Ebi. Now this, I can't tell you where this island is. It's the middle of the Pacific. It's so tiny. It's like very, very tiny. And I went on a dental mission out there. And um, it was so horrific that the hallway were was packed with children and the adults would actually walk past and push themselves through just because they wanted dental care. The I stayed on an army base and the receptionist, she knew that we were there to do dental care. And would you believe me that while I was actually taking a shower, because they had like um, community showers, while I was taking a shower, she actually came in and asked me how she can get into the clinic. That is how badly they need the care, you know? And they speak another language. Most of them speak English, but it was, we, we went there for the children, you know? The adults got treated, but we went there for the children. And it was, I cried. I cried when I came back to the States because there's so many people out there who, 
do not know how to take care of themselves. They do not have the gospel. And, and so you do these missionary trips to go and share God with them and take care of them at the same time. Um, I'm not going to click on this, stay on this too long because then I'll get emotional. Now here is um, a picture of what's called dental phobia. Yes, what's your question? I see your hand, go ahead. I just was gonna comment cause I'm doing too much to type what I wanted to say. <laughs> I wanted to say most people, if you, um, I know in my state that I live in Maryland, every year you will see certain churches one or two churches, they may not be in Baltimore City, they may be like a 40 minutes away. They will have a big health fair on a Sabbath and a Sunday where unfortunately they are partnering with the city and giving those shots, but they also are giving vision care with glasses and dental care, including extractions. And Every year, because I went to one um, and I go to them because the glasses there are less expensive uh, than if you don't have health insurance and you wear glasses, they are expensive. And um, I, I go and I have gone before for the dental care and the line looks just like that picture, but with adults. And if you, you, people will line up as if you're giving out money to wow. get in line, to get the spaces before they fill out. Typically they fill out, <laughs> they run out of spaces for the vision than the dental care because they just don't have enough people to see everybody, but they can get all the people in the dental schools and all the, um, their military people are there, um, so just look around. If you're looking for um, health care, just ask around, look around, um, call 311. I yeah, I think through, yeah, 311. Ask, you know, if there's a health fair coming around. Look out for these health fairs because sometimes they do have these um, dental and vision clinics and you don't have to get all the services. You can go there and just get your dental care taken care of. Just get your vision care ta taken care of. And um, I've never gone on a Sabbath, but they have had it on a Sabbath. I've gone on a Sunday before. So just, you know, and, and you'll see a lot of immigrants in this line too. And it's let, just let you know, they need the services and they're out there. So they're really, I'm not going to say there's no excuse, but there's becoming fewer and fewer excuses. You just have to put the effort in and you want to do that, especially if you're not going to, um, be proactive with your own care by implementing these things that she's teaching us. Thank you so much for sharing that. Another thing, um, <clears throat> just look. Every single year you have, um, I guess in the state that I'm in, you have um, Give Kids a Smile Day. I think it's a, I think it's a nationwide thing. Is this a nationwide thing? There's somebody on the line that can answer that question for me. But um, Give Kids a Smile, that is mostly for, for children. However, I'm also a part of the RAM, the Remote Area Medical Clinic. It's a, it's a pro bono work. In some states, some dentists will um, w are required to do pro bono work in order to renew their license, and they have to show that they actually did that. So the RAM Clinic is a medical and... Um, dental clinic that they do and they usually go to what's called the underserved community communities so that they can take care of these people and when I sign up they would I would have to ask them do you want me to come as a nurse or a dental hygienist well there's usually a lot of nurses and they said no we need hygienists to come and so um, I would go as a hygienist right so you want to look for that you also this is called the RAM clinic just find out where they're going to be next you also have Pathway for Health because um, they actually have a huge dental section. This is an Adventist um, movement that or organization, and they travel throughout the state and they will have your eyes, your they even give haircuts, they do all kinds of things. So just look for these things 
so that you can um, get access to dental care, you know? So just just keep your eyes out for these for these type of things. Um, Natasha, I, I just sent you something. If not, I can try and pull up on my computer. I do want to show you this. This is another condition that a lot of people don't necessarily think about, but you have dental phobia. Now, I cannot play it from my screen here, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second and see if I can pull this up for you. Give me a second, please. Oh, Natasha, can you pull that up for me? One moment. How did you send it to me? In the chat or? What's up? What's up? Okay, <clears throat> let me look for it. It's a video you'd like me to share. Yes, please. It's very short. Now, while, while she's pulling this up, the main thing here, okay, what is the number one, the first thing that you want to do when you're treating someone as a medical missionary? What is the first place you want to get to? Is it their disease? Is it their mind? Or is it how much money they have? Put an answer in the in the chat. I see an answer. The mind. Now, when you're dealing with phobia, you're talking about something that has to do with the person, how the person thinks. Now, if a person comes up to me like this, I'm not going to shun away from them simply because I realized I was just first asked the question, how come, how come? OK, you don't look down on people when they have a condition because you must understand that there is something going on with their minds. So the main thing here with this kind of um, condition that you will see, and I've seen things like this before, you know, and you really have to talk to talk to the, the patient or the person that you're dealing with. rather. Whatever it is that caused the fear must be addressed. You know, um, I have a. Um, I recall having a little boy who was so fearful. I mean, this, this child was like maybe five or six, so fearful of the dental, cl the dental clinic. And I saw why. And, and usually the fear actually starts when they're young. You know, the assistant, she literally tied him up on a papoose. This is something that the Native Americans would use to keep the children closed in because they're still babies, they're infants. And so they're used to being in a closed space, like in the womb. And so they have the papoose to actually keep keep that kind of um, assurance or sensation for that baby. But in the dental clinic, they do have what's called a papoose. And what you pretty much do is to pretty much restrain the child so that they can keep still and do, so that you can get the procedure done. Well, this lady actually used the papoose, but the way she did it was so horrific. I could not believe my eyes. She was just talking very hard to him. She strapped him down on a papoose. And I said, look, you know what? You have to go. Thank you. But no, thank you. You are not helping the situation here. It took me like 15 minutes just to talk that child and calm him down for him to, to calm down long enough for me to treat him. But I had to deal with the mental state that he was obviously in, which was very traumatic. OK, and I was able I was only able to treat like two of his teeth, but you have to really, really work closely with people and what's going on in their mind. I had um, one person that called me and the fear and the thoughts that interrupts them making simple decision is amazing. I think I spent six hours listening to this one individual and I thought to myself, the person only needed to talk to someone. Thank you. And so we have to really take the time to meet people at their needs. You may never get to do anything with them, but just talk to them. I'm ready whenever you are, Natasha. Go ahead. We can't hear anything. OK. Restarting. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Nemeth. I'm a periodontist in Southfield, Michigan. And I want to talk about something just as basic as toothbrushing. I mean, pretty much everybody mostly does it every day, but not necessarily everybody. There was one gentleman that we had who hadn't brushed his teeth for 20 years. And I think it'll be interesting for you to take a look at what that can look like. This gentleman had dental phobia. 
he was afraid to go to the dentist, and he was even afraid to brush his own teeth. In fact, I asked him how he was able to eat because his teeth were so heavily caked with tartar that, that it seemed like, well, how is this fellow going to be able to eat? He said, well, he just has soft food that he can kind of mash in his mouth. Also, his breath was not too pleasant, and there were other things going on um, because of his dental phobia. So we removed all of that tartar. We did it under IV sedation so he was asleep and he was able to tolerate it. It took a long, long time, hours and hours, to remove all of this cement-like tartar that was there. He couldn't bring himself to brush his teeth or take care of his mouth and was causing other problems in his personal life. I don't want to go into detail, but that's the case. And it saved his teeth and it changed his life. And it's made a different man out of him. We continue to see this person on a regular basis to make sure things stay healthy. And it's a whole different mouth and a whole different life for him. So it's been great. But this was a very interesting situation. I'm Dr. Nemeth. Remember, healthy mouth, healthy body. This is your friend. Have a good day. Restore your smile and your health. Okay, let me reshare again. Hang on. So with this, you have to be conscious that there may be something going on with um, um from a mental perspective. You're not gonna we're not going to judge people, but we're gonna be very compassionate, regardless how of how uncomfortable it may be, the smell and everything. You find that in the hospital as well. But when you treat somebody's mind, you can go a lot further with them. Okay, let me get to my um presenters view so I can see. Okay, now here you have, <clears throat> sometimes you may feel um, very good, you're in health and your oral hygiene is perfect, it's good, it's optimum, but something else could be going on and you will not know it until it gets out of control. Now here you have a picture here and there's arrows here on this um, panoramic view. And the beautiful thing, I really absolutely like looking at x-rays, especially off the head, because um, you have the teeth here above the teeth where they look like two dark spots. Those are where your sinuses are. And so when a person has, um, they could be having sinus issues, it may very well be coming from their teeth. Because if you see the roots, it comes right up close to where the, the sinuses are. And so you you want to you wanna make sure that you're, you're getting at least get a checkup, you know, on, on this. Um, here you will see a person with this white arrow right on the lower right hand of the screen. There's a, a little opaque area because the thing with x rays, it only takes up hard substances, it goes right through the tissue, which is why you can see those two like the eye socket and the sinuses below the eyes and um, the dark areas below the with the L and the R is on the lower screen, those dark areas. But the white areas are called opaque, so it's like really, really dense material. In this, in this case, it would be bone. Now, this is what we call an osteoma. Osteo meaning bone, oma means growth or swelling. If there is something going on and <clears throat> you would want to know what it is, this is why it would be good to know what your dental health status is periodically if you can. But now there are... Um, but but if people don't do these things, this stuff may be growing and you don't know until you start having a problem. On the opposite side of the screen, can you see this too? It looks almost complete. Well, it, it looks almost completely horizontal. You know what this is going to do to the bone behind the tooth that's already erupted with a filling on the lower right hand side? It's going to destroy the bone there because the gums cannot attach to the enamel. It does not do it. And so if you have this whole entire crown of enamel under the gums, there's gonna be a pocket there and nobody can clean that. 
And so that tooth would have to be extracted. That would be a situation where the tooth would have to be extracted. This is what the osteoma would actually look like under A, the letter A, that it would just starts growing and for whatever, for whatever reason, it's just growing and growing out of control until a person has like a big mass on the side of their, of their face because they didn't know it was going on. So getting regular checkup is very, very important. So now I'm gonna look at three, um, actually two more, maybe, maybe two or three more systemic conditions that are affected by poor health. Respiratory. Now what happened is People with chronic periodontal disease can and will make themselves vulnerable to pneumonia, or um, they may um, exacerbate already existing respiratory conditions such as COPD, emphysema, COVID, smoking, things like that. Basically, these will become worse with gum disease. As a nurse, it is vital that oral health is done on patients, especially if they are in ICU or, critical, or on the critical care unit. Why? Because if it is not, then they will be inhaling all these germs into their lungs, and that can cause a lot of problems. Okay? And also, it's coming from the blood. Now, if you um, know, know about anatomy and physiology, you know that the blood has to circulate through the heart, leave the heart, and go through the lungs to drop off the carbon dioxide and pick up oxygen. If that blood is infected with periodontal pathogens, I would not want to know what will happen if a person has already compromised respiratory conditions. Okay, I wouldn't encourage to even think what could happen to them. So if they're in um, ICU or if they're in the, the hospital, this is exactly why when a person is admitted to the hospital, they actually give them a toothpaste and toothbrush and, a, and mouth rinse. Okay, so if you have any, um, any loved ones in the hospital, if the nurses or the techs are not doing it, you're going to have to help them doing it or encourage them to make sure that they're keeping their, their mouths clean. Now, this can happen by a person, like I said, inhaling the bacteria or gets them from the bloodstream. One condition that can directly affect the lungs from a tooth with um, what's called gross decay or a really big cavity is called loved wing angina. Okay? And this is what this looks like. This smaller picture where the person, the side of their jaw right down to their neck is um, swollen, that's coming from an actual tooth, like a decay from the tooth. And now there's inflammation and swelling there. That inflammation and swelling can actually um, go down to the to the teeth, to, to the um, blood vessels from the root canals into the blood and cause the inflammation there. And they will... Um, they will actually, it can actually cut off their airway. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our mouths clean and getting a checkup if we have to. Now, as far as smoking, <clears throat> smoking and dental disease in any form or any type is not good. Okay. Whether it's cigarettes, cigars, which by the way, one cigar is equivalent to approximately smoking 20 cigarettes at one time. So for the people out there who are smoking like what you call like your black and mild or smoking actual cigars, they have no idea what they're doing to their body because it's like you're smoking like multiple cigarettes at one time. Okay. Cannabis in any form, um, whether they're doing vaping, which vaping is not good. Some people think that's a good alternative to smoking. It is not. It's just another set of chemicals that is absolutely bad for the body. Or, um, or if they're smoking it, or if it's in edibles or snuff, those type of the smokeless tobacco, all of those things are are bad for us. There's another thing that it with the cannabis or the marijuana, they actually can extract this like paste. It's like a paste. It's it's the most concentrated form of marijuana, and it is absolutely horrible. And what it does. It drives people insane and it actually makes their skin look like alligator skin, you know? So when I did my, my nursing rotation through the psych ward, there was actually an individual that actually did this and it was horrific to even listen to this person, how controlled he was under the influence of this thing. They, um, they're healing 
is impaired because of the smoke and all the chemicals from these things, and it affects the amount of medication you may need for a dental procedure. So if you need to get numbed up for something, they will probably need to a lot more anesthetic than the average person if something needs to be done, okay? Should, should they need that kind of procedure done? Okay, it affects their normal body functions, such as it will cause them to have food cravings, especially with the, mar the use of marijuana. I went to Penn State University when I left high school and I had a roommate that actually ate all my food because she was smoking marijuana all night long. This was very, very irritating to me, but that was a long time ago. Smoking is a contributor to the teeth being stained as well, and it causes bone loss at a faster rate for some people. And because of the bone loss, the gums will recede and contribute to sensitivity of the teeth due to the um the root not being exposed. Okay, I'm going to stop in a little bit because it's about 3.40 and I want to make sure that you have some time for questions. As I mentioned before, smoking will negatively affect the lungs by making the, by causing them to have problems even up to cancer, okay? And constant introduction of the the toxin that is found in a cigarette from either firsthand smoking, okay, the person that's the person smoking themselves, secondhand smoking, that's the non-smoker who is inhaling cigarette smoke from a smoker, or thirdhand smoking, that is more like you sit in the car of somebody who smokes and all that um, substance is now coming onto your clothing and your skin and you get to smoke as well. So it's really important to be mindful of those things. Or oral cancer, this is where I'm going to address the oral cancer, is often seen with changes within the oral tissues. Usually if there's an ulcer or sore that does not heal within 7 to 14 days, this should be checked by a dentist. So if there's a lesion or some kind of sore or something that comes up into the mouth and it does not heal, like your body should be able to heal um these things within seven to 14 days, you have to get that. I will highly, I'm not going to say have to, but you, I will highly encourage you to get that checked. The dental professional will perform an oral cancer screening. It's pretty much just like a ma massage. And that what they're looking for is for lesion lumps in or outside the mouth or around the mouth. This procedure usually covers um, from your clavicle to up to your forehead. If there's anything detected, the provider will will give will do further evaluations that may include tests and biopsies. And these are some of the lesions that you would look at. <clears throat> you have these white lesions, which is the first picture on the side of the tongue. Okay, if that that could be from the person having a, a chipped tooth that is constantly rubbing on the the chipped area and it causes it to become opaque. Um, you have this one under the tongue. There's something on the side of the lip here, and then there's another one on the on the gingival tissue above the teeth. Any of those things, if they're not healing, you need to go to the doctor. I would not stop and say, "Hey, if somebody calls me and say, "Here, this is uh, this is what's going on in my mouth." Can you tell me what herb to use? No, I'm not going to tell you what herb to use. I'm going to tell you to go see your dentist and get that evaluated. Always watch what's going on with the blood, okay? This is very, very, very good for your body. Um, if a, When a person stops smoking, after 20 minutes, the blood pressure goes down, the heart rate goes down, the hands and the feet gets warmer. Um, after eight hours, the blood carbon monoxide level returns to normal. Blood oxygen level goes up. One day, the heart, heart attack risk is lowered. Two days, the body becomes free of nicotine. And the thing is, the nicotine actually competes with the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. And acetylcholine plays a very important role in how we actually function. And nicotine actually chases to get that receptor site before the acetylcholine. So when a person stops smoking for two days, the nicotine, um, the body's free of nicotine. Nerve endings adjust to missing nicotine. Okay, and some um, the sense of taste and smell actually starts to improve. After two to 13 weeks, blood circulation is better, exercise is easier. After about a year, heart risk is cut in half. Five years, cervical cancer risk is, um, is the same as a non-smoker. Stroke risk is the same as a non-smoker. Cancer risk of the mouth 
and throat and esophagus and the bladder is cut in half. And then after 10 years, lung cancer risk is also cut in half. So it's really, really important to know that, hey, quitting smoking is a big deal, but you must also address the mind. Okay, you must address the mind. I am going to actually stop here because I'm going to go into preterm labor next. And I don't want to really start talking about that because that can take um, some time to explain. So I'm going to pause here. We have about hmm, 18 minutes for questions, if you have any questions. This is so profound, Sister Camille, of the connection and how it's sometimes overlooked. But once you're connecting the pieces here, it's very, very clear. Just a comment. Any questions? Go ahead, Sister Veronica. I just wanted to say, um, and I'm saying this to learn, we don't want to be like traditional. Can you, cast can you hear me? I can hear you. I hear another person talking, but I can hear you. Oh, okay. Maybe answer their question. They seem to be needing something. Go ahead. I'll wait. Is there a question? I thought they were saying something about the slide, like don't move it or move it or something. I don't know. I couldn't hear well. God's choose one. Did you have a question? You were talking earlier. Okay. Um, go ahead, Sister Veronica. Okay. I just wanted us to say, I just wanted us to remember um, something so that we do not make the same mistake that traditional medical personnel do. And that is, we know that we all need to be medical missionaries. And so this dental health is vital. So please make the connection when you're talking to your client of the connection between dental and medical. I mean, we are not dentists but make the connection. You can, you know, you you can notice some things when you're observing them, when you are observing them olfactory wise, visually, you will learn some things and you can begin to ask the right questions or even adjust your assessment form to include these things because we've heard um, the presenter share um, and we might know autumn already based on your health care. You know, when you sign up for health care healthcare, um, at, a, at a job or for the state, dentist, dental care is separate. It is not included in your health plan. You have to pay extra for dental care. You have to pay extra for vision care. So when we see our client, when someone comes to us for help, taps us on the shoulder or ask us something in the chat, we have to think holistically and that includes our dental health. Thank you. Yes, that's, it's very true. Thank you for that. Any other questions? You cannot tell me that I possibly answered all your question in this presentation. <laughs> so I remember hearing someone say that you can't, it's not good to brush your teeth right after you eat because the enamel is soft and you should wait a bit. Is that true? That is not true. That is not true at all. That is when you actually want to brush your teeth or rinse with some water because you want to get the sugar from the foods that you're eating off the teeth. The thing is you want to, whenever you're doing something like lemon water, you know, because of the acid in it, you don't want to um, 
to brush your teeth right afterwards, after drinking lemon water. Just rinse your mouth out with some water or drink some more water just to get it, just to get that pH back to where it needs to be. Also, um, for that One same second, topic, one second. This, this, is, this is exactly why when we're told to start our morning off with um, two to four cups of warm lemon water, you're told to use a straw because it's exactly. too acidic. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry. That's just what I was gonna say. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. Are there any other questions? So question here, good afternoon. Very informative um, information. I'm just trying to find out, is it true that you should not um, use mouthwash um, for your teeth because it will tend to destroy or weaken the enamel? Is that true? That is not a true statement. The thing is, the, the only thing, because really we tell our patients as I hygienists, and there's another hygienist on the line with us. Um, as hygienists, we are, we basically said brush, floss, and rinse. Okay. When you brush your 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 mouth, your teeth or clean your mouth, you want to rinse and get that debris stuff out of your mouth. You don't want to swallow that. The main thing about the mouthwash is that a lot of them has a lot of alcohol in them. They may have dyes in them that is not good for the body. So you really want to make sure that you look at the kind of mouth rinse that you're using. If a person really wants to use a minty mouth rinse, just put a drop or two of peppermint in water and rinse your mouth out. <laughs> you know, that's that should be enough, like peppermint essential oil. You know, or just use plain water and that's enough to get that debris that you just washed, um, that you just brushed off. Did that answer your question? Yeah, um, so is Listerine um, one of the options to use as a mouthwash? I'm going to put this in, I'm going to put this ball in your park. Look at the amount of alcohol in Listerine. Okay. All right. Um, I also have a follow-up question to that. And that yes. is, you know, when I deal with little ones, little ones being three, four, five, six, seven, eight, mm -hmm. they don't get their teeth cleaned well. And I'm, I am split between, okay, sit here, let me brush your teeth for you and make sure I get it clean versus letting them do it. But I see that they're not getting the plaque off when they're that young and you, even when you're guiding them through, what are your recommendations to help keep the teeth clean when they're still developing at that age? Okay, I'm gonna put up, pull up two pictures. I'm gonna pull up a quote and I'm going to, um, you see this quote right here? Can you read this quote for me? Mm -hmm. A practical knowledge of the science of the human life is necessary in order to glorify God in our bodies. It is therefore of the highest importance that among the studies selected for childhood, physiology should occupy the first place. Right, and as you continue to read that particular section in the book, Healthful Living, and then she said, add hygiene. She added hygiene to it. Now, children, don't necessarily have the proper dexterity right. to um to brush their teeth. So they're going to need someone to actually brush their teeth for them. Okay. My son is older. Is like he's, he's 11. And I still actually stand there sometime and help him brush his teeth. Okay. This is this because they're children. I mean, at the age of 11, they still need help. And the thing is, a lot of people probably don't know how to they don't know what to look for and so they don't they don't even spend the time to do that because some people don't think that they should but it's very important one of the most hurtful things is to see children with cavities they should not have cavities it's preventable but when it comes to that it takes the parent or the guardian working with the dentist if they've been to a dental facility to make sure that they're cleaning the teeth properly. This is why as hygienists, when we're treating children, we sometimes use what we call disclosing agents to show the child, hey, look, you see all this stuff off your teeth? 
on your teeth. This is what we need to need to come off. And so we would demonstrate to them, but the parent or the guardian needs to follow up with that. You know, whoever the guardians are, it needs to follow up with that. Children, they don't, they don't know. They will sit there and scrape the stuff off and show like, hey, I get all this stuff off my teeth. You see that? And they think it's something to be proud of, but you just definitely have to continue to educate them. And as you can see, as you can see, even when we get into adult age, if it was not taught properly, we tend to have the same mistakes. I've, sp I've spoken to people who don't brush their teeth. They say, I don't brush my teeth because they don't understand the importance of doing that. Would you recommend these, um, I forgot what you call them, coloring agents for home use? No. Okay. It's, it's not necessary. Okay. Because while we're there, remember that we have the suction and everything and we tell them to spit it out. If a child gets a hold of that or the parent don't know, I wouldn't run the risk of a child swallowing these things. They're okay. harmless, but I still wouldn't want them swallowing these things. That's my personal thought on it. So no, it's not necessary. Just keep the teeth clean. Just brush, brush, brush. Sing a song. I see Sherry Ann has her hand up. Go ahead, Sherry Ann. Hi, good afternoon. My question is, what about um, baking soda and water to like wash your mouth out instead of the harsh chemicals of Listerine and so forth? Can I ask how come you say baking soda and water? I do see some questions in the chat and I'm going to address that in a little bit. Can I ask how come you say baking soda? Because I know, I know um, I've seen where people say that, you know, you can actually brush your teeth with baking soda. Mm -hmm. But I mean, to, to use just it, use it as a mouthwash instead of just brushing the teeth with it. Okay. Well, you that... hear... Okay. Well, you... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was asking if would that be fine? Uh, can I ask another question? I am going to answer you. Um, were sure. you here for part one and part two? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. So let me just do this. Um, baking soda is, um, I believe it has a pH of like over nine. It's very alkaline and I would not use that in my mouth. I wouldn't even put my hand in baking soda and water because it's too caustic for, for the body. So I would not recommend that they rinse with baking soda. Now, the, the main thing is to understand why are you rinsing the mouth? Okay, it's the same reason, like when we go and take a shower and we soap and we have that lather, and we soap our bodies up, we have to rinse that out. You can just use plain water. Uh, when I get to the point of talking about oral hygiene, I do give a recipe for a mouth rinse. And so we're going to get to that, but you, there's no need to, you can just use simple water. All of these things Somebody may come after me, but that's okay. All of these things in the stores, all these mouthwash, you have like a whole aisle of mouthwashes. It's not necessary. Just water is, is enough for us to use. And we would, we would recognize that the main thing is to get the plaque to be removed off the teeth, is to get this stuff off the teeth. Rinsing is not going to take it off because it's sticky. You have to physically, mechanically remove that. So rinsing okay. is not going to do anything for us if we don't remove it. And when you do that, you rinse it out and spit it out. There's no need for dyes and sweet smelling water. All of that is just a money-making thing. Okay. Did I answer Thank your you. question? Did I answer? Yes, it did. Okay. It did. Thank you very much. You are welcome. So you did mention something about peppermint oil. Did you was that in line with what you just with what you just spoke about with water? Yeah, if people want to have that, if people want to have that minty fresh, like you know, Listerine will probably give, or you have these other um, fluoride mouth rinse and all these other things, and they're pink and green and aqua colored. You can just take the water after you brush all the plaque off the teeth. Just take the water and drop a, a, a drop of peppermint, peppermint oil, the good one, the organic peppermint essential oil is very strong. One drop of it in a cup of water or half a cup of water is enough for you to rinse your mouth out and have that fresh feeling if that's what you're used to. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
You're welcome. Let me let me address this question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I um I have a question. Um, my name is Audrey. Um, I'm not sure if I'm ahead regarding my question, but I just wanted to, since there's so many toothpaste out there and it has all the wrong ingredients for our mouth, I was wondering of the ingredients you would recommend as okay. a, super, a toothpaste substitution. Okay, good question. Um, in the first presentation, I said, I do not recommend any kind of dental products. Reason being, for one, as a dental professional, I cannot do that. Mainly can you repeat that? Yes, as a dental professional, I do not recommend any dental cleaning products, okay, or hygiene products. Really, the main reason for that is, is because, for one, I do not know how your body will respond to any of the ingredients that I use that that I that I tell you in the in that product. And you may have an adverse effect. Now as a professional, I must be mindful that the information that I give is information that you can use to make a decision. It's only for to educate and to inform. Okay? Um the other thing is you have to remember again the reason why you are brushing your teeth. You don't need toothpaste to remove the plaque off your teeth. You could use a, a, a toothbrush that you wet under some water to make sure that the bristles are soft because you don't want to brush the gums away and you don't want to brush the enamel away from constant hard brushing. And so you just want to remove the plaque. If you can see the screen, all we're trying to do is to remove the plaque. If you notice, when you go to the dental clinic and you get your teeth professionally clean, we're not using any toothpaste to clean your teeth. We're actually just mechanically removing the stuff off your teeth. So it's just to just to have a mindset of what exactly is my objective is to remove this. Now, if you want to get that foamy feel and, you know, bubbles falling out of your mouth and dripping everywhere, kids like that, great. Give them a toothpaste that is safe. Now, to answer that question now, if you choose to use um, <clears throat> if you choose to use some kind of toothpaste, I will highly encourage you. I did not, I don't, I have not, I'm not up to that hygiene section, but it's called um, Cosmetic Database. I think it's actually changed to another name, but you can definitely get to it called Cosmetic Database. Just Google that, and what that does is an amazing um, database. What they do, they take chemicals such as shampoo, lipstick, lip gloss, lip balm, mouthwash, toothpaste, anything that you put on your body, soaps, all of these things, and they actually um, tell you what the ingredients are in that particular product, and they give it a rating from like zero to 10, anything that's closest to zero is good. I think it's like a green, it's in a green circle and it would tell you if this is good or not, if this is safe. And you will actually see, if you're going to look up toothpaste on the cosmetic database, I think it starts EP something right now, but I don't remember. I do remember it called cosmetic database years ago. And it, you will see all the ingredients in whatever product you're looking for and then you can make a determination from that, but that final decision would be yours. But that's one good resource to have um, to look at. It is absolutely amazing. Natasha, if you can bring that up, that would be great so you can actually see it. If not, I would do it for you uh, from my end. It's four o'clock actually. Yes, so um, just a quick note, I put the link to parts one and parts two of Sister Camille's presentation in the chat if you were not present for those so you can pull them up and listen. Um, if you'd like to join our WhatsApp group, I've put that link in the chat in the cosmetic database. Um, mm -hmm. Just speaking of, the link is there as well and I'll share my screen so you can see it. Right. So there's another question I have, please. Um, yes, and I, and I definitely, hang on one second, and I definitely want to um, respond to the to the questions on the in the chat. Go ahead. So if you have sensitive teeth mm -hmm. and you realize that your teeth are sensitive and your dentist says to you the best toothpaste to use is um Sensodyne. Um what is your 
your intake um, on that? Well, the person who is going to do that, just uh -huh. know that, just know that if you are having any adverse reaction to it, then you're going to have to stop. But it's a decision for that individual. Okay. But if you That's find all. that it's working for you, it is okay. It would be that person's decision. But you want to make sure that you know what chemicals, this is why this whole cosmetic database is so important for you to look at it because you want to know what you are pushing in your body. And while, while Natasha is doing this, I'm going to be answering the question in the thing. Natasha, you can look up Sensodyne. Just look up Sensodyne so we can see what's in it. And that will be helpful. Let me take a look at this question and hopefully this will help you. Thank you okay. very much. You are welcome. But one of the things I also want to um encourage you to find out from the dentist is you should ask the dentist, the dentist, how is it that my teeth are sensitive? Do I have root exposure? Am okay. I brushing my teeth too hard? Okay. Am I using a hard toothbrush? What do you recommend, Doc? Because I don't want to just take any chemical and put it in my body and not fix what the problem is. Great. Does that make sense? Yes. So you want to think Great. about it like that. Okay, um, let me take a look at this. Um, is it okay to gargle with diluted hydrogen peroxide? Um, it's okay to rinse with um, hydrogen peroxide. I wouldn't dilute it because what you just did is change the chemical makeup of the hydrogen peroxide. Okay, um, so I wouldn't necessarily dilute anything because then you're putting more water molecules in an H2O2 um, chemical. What I've used the, the hydrogen peroxide is for um, gross plaque buildup. And when you put hydrogen peroxide on something, I had to use it earlier for my, for my son today, and you spray it, you know, you, you gargle with it, your mouth is going to foam. And what it's actually doing is actually killing the bacteria. You're still going to have to brush that out of the mouth. Okay, so when I was doing the medical missionary um, uh, trip, I use that to get a whole lot of the bacteria and clean up the mouth as much as I can. Because if I'm working on a child and they have that ulceration, I do not want that amount of bacteria going into their bloodstream. So I try to get it as clean as I possibly can before I go into like the proper cleaning for that child, which involves me going within that pocket space. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, washcloth works also. Um, you typically, after a child is... Um, Finish breastfeeding or drinking from a bottle, you definitely want to clean their gums off and get all that milk out of their mouths, even on their tongue. Try to get that cleaned off as much as you can without gagging the child. Okay. Sister Camille, how would you like to proceed? Because it's four o'clock. So <laughs> I can't believe we've come to the end of two hours. Um, and you're, there's still more in your presentation. There's one more hand. I think that's the last one, I believe. Okay. So, but just in terms of the presentation, are we going to pause after this last question? Yes. Okay. Hold on. Did you bring up the, the cosmetic database? I did, but I, um, I'll um i pull it back up again. You were okay. answering a question about um, hydrogen peroxide. I'll pull it back okay. up. Go ahead, Veronica. I see your hand. Um, I wanted to double check. So you're saying that if you're going to gargle with hydrogen peroxide, we need to brush afterwards. Is that what I heard you say? Yes, definitely. Understood. Yes, I got mm -hmm. that from my my niece. Her dad is a retired dentist, and he he always he actually dilutes the hydrogen peroxide. But I will mention to her not to dilute the hydrogen peroxide. But he's no. been doing that. He's 94, so he's been doing that way longer than I can say, um, but good to know. And then um, my question was, oh Lord, don't tell me I lost it, Lord. Was it with charcoal? Is it okay? Oh no, I know what it was. Thank you, God. If you have an extraction um, that is not visible, but if you have an extraction, do you have to get uh, the, the- Okay, pause Natasha, go ahead. Pause right there, Natasha. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> thank you. you right there. Get, Go ahead. To Go get ahead. That tooth replaced with a false tooth, or can you just leave it the pocket empty? Because I had a tooth all the way in the back. The last tooth in the back got extracted. It couldn't be re re uh, spared, 
And I, I, I think I thought that the bottom tooth might continue to grow up or would it be, or, or do I, it doesn't, it's not affecting my facial structure, I guess, because I have the other balanced tooth. I don't know. But it, I, if you looked at me, you wouldn't know I don't have a tooth there. And I just want to know, is there a problem with leaving that blank? Or do I have to get, I forgot what it's called, but it's extremely expensive. It's a, I'm going to say it's a post. It's a, one of your pictures had it. It's like a fake one tooth. Okay. Hang on to that. I'm going to answer that okay. question. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Natasha, can you give me about five more minutes? Would that be a problem for everybody? That's fine. Okay. Um, the lady who asked about Sensodyne, I hope she can see the screen. Okay. When scroll back up for me, Natasha, please. Okay, right there. Now the hazard score range. Okay. You have that um, EWG verified. They changed it. I knew this website from when it was called Cosmetic Database. Okay, that was a long time ago. Um, so that's what they would, that's verified. This is what mostly would have products that are safe for the body, unless you know that you're, you are allergic to it. One and two are your best. It used to be that three was green. They have obviously changed it to be yellow. And then your red is the worst. When you scroll down so that we can see the rating for Sensodyne. All right. Where is it? It's a four. Okay, data availability, the availability that gives it fear. It's moderately hazardous. Can you click on that, please? I'm going to show you how to use this website. Can you click on, mm -hmm. no, not polynomial sensodyne. Okay, you got polynomial sensodyne. Okay, scroll down. Keep scrolling. Keep scrolling. Keep going. I want you to see something. Keep going. Okay, keep scrolling down. It's telling you, stop. It's telling you exactly what is in that actual product. And if you don't want fluoride in your body, okay, or if you don't want um, coca midrophil, fentanine. Sister Camille, may I pause one minute? Sorry. Thank you. Continue. Okay. So now this tells you, keep scrolling down. You have a four there. Keep scrolling down. Okay, stop. They actually tell you how to read this material, how to read the page, and they tell you what is in it. So you can now decide based on these chemicals in this um, particular toothpaste, whether you want to use it or not. Okay? And so that's just, and see what it says, the concern allergies are moderate. Use restrictions are high, and it tells you what contamination concern. It tells you everything about that product, so you can actually make a decision as to what whether or not you're going to use that or not. That's the that's the best way I can tell you what to use. And then you can get even more information. Right, and the whole chemical makeup and everything. And I I pretty much look at these things. Maybe I have too much time on my hands. Who knows? But it's, it's, it, the information is out there for us to know what we are doing to our bodies. There's one slogan I learned from somebody that was doing some kind of skin or hair product. And they said, if, if I won't put it in my body, I'm not going to put it on my body. And I, and I take that slogan very seriously because I don't want any and everything in my body, you know? So, um, and then each of these chemicals have their own rating. So you want to just take a look at that. And I hope that helps to answer your question. If the doctor recommends it, I would, I would highly encourage you to go and look it up and see for yourself if it's something that you would want to use. But remember you, why you're trying to achieve. Go ahead. I'm seeing, I Did yes, that I'm seeing it. I'm seeing, the, um, I'm seeing the information that you're sharing. Good. Is that helpful to you? 
um, it's helpful because it will make me now begin to, you know, um, do some more um, researching into it and to see, you know, if I really want to continue using it. Yes. And look for something for sensitivity that doesn't have that much stuff if you want to use something. But also ask, ask the doctor, what is the cause of your sensitivity? That will be good because remember, the cure is in the cause. I agree. I certainly agree. And I certainly will do that. So we are looking at one and two, which looks like it's not, um, you know, not that bad in terms of using it. Right. But I'll definitely be, you know, be a bit more mindful. Thanks again. Very helpful. And please share, share this information with other people. Our goal is to win souls for Christ. Share it with them. Yeah, I did share the um the website, the, the link. Yeah, the information on there. Okay, good. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think that was the last uh, question. Let me make sure. Hang on. Okay. Okay, I think that was the last question, um, Natasha. Wow, thank you so much, Sister Camille, for a, like, a power-packed informational session. And um, it is so, knowledge is power. Educate, educate, educate. That's the admo admonition we've been given. Um, as we come to a close today, um, I'd like to just invite everyone who might have missed parts one and part two to go ahead and get those from the link or join our WhatsApp group, and they'll be posted there as well, as well as part three, which you've participated in today, um, that will be posted later. But Natasha, I had I wanted to show one more thing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Give me one second because I told Veronica that I would let her know something. I would let her see something. <clears throat> now, are we going to do another time? Just let me know when so I can finish this up because we have one. Uh, we have just a few more things to go over, but it shouldn't take too long. Okay. Yes, we will find another time and let everyone know. Okay, so let me just do this one picture here because I had it at the beginning. Um, how do I share this? Okay. Let me share. Okay, um, Veronica, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so you're saying that these two teachers no, these that last things. one. It's that last one. That this one, but one. on top. Now, my biggest on the top, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So if you can chew and you're perfectly fine with chewing like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'll tell you what my decision would be. I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't. Now, do you have these two molars in? I actually don't have any molars. I don't remember when they got removed, but my all my other teeth are there in my mouth. Except the molars? Yeah, they said I don't have molars. And I said, I don't know how can I have molars. I think I would remember getting them removed, but they said I don't have them. So I must have blacked it out. I had no idea. But all my other teeth in my mouth, I'm just verifying, <laughs> are there except for that one on the top um in the back the last one on the top in the back upper and the suggest the suggestion was to get something that gets a screw and then the tooth goes there and that stays there or this thing that comes in and out and I'm like look I think I'm okay <laughs> okay let's just talk let's just talk together about that offline all right. Is that okay? No problem. Another day, right. though. Yes, yes, okay, yes. No problem. Yeah, because the, the, the suggestion is a very expensive one. And you need to know your yes, options. Yes, it is. Yes, okay. it is. All right. So it's I'm going like to leave that one. The cost of a car. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to leave that one for now. <laughs> okay, so let's just, um, I'm done. And um, Natasha, do you want me to close with prayer or you want to close with prayer? Um. You can close with prayer. I just wanted, before we close, you had said something called RAM. Is that what it was? Remote medical? Remote area medical um, 
Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I had that correct. Mm -hmm. Remote area medical. And I put the link for that in the chat. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it right there. Super. I see it. Okay. <laughs> Loving Father in heaven. Father, you are truly a wonderful God. You said in your word, if anyone lack wisdom, let him ask and that you would give and not upbraid it. You would not undo it, unravel it. You would give us sound wisdom, dear God. You said in Proverbs 8 that those who love you, wisdom, loves life. We know how the verse ends. And so, dear God, we don't want to die. We want to ask that you would please teach us and lead us and help us to understand and to use the mind that you have given us as long as it is sound to search and to find the answers that comes from your guidance, your instruction, your counsel first. Please, dear God, empower every single one of us to use what we have learned today, what we already know, to not only see the gospel in the work and the talents that you have given us, but to help others see you. Please forgive us of our sins, dear Father, and help us to put self to side and to work for the night is coming. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Amen. And a special thanks to you, Sister Camille. Amen. All right, everybody. I am off. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just end our recording.